Thank you very much. It's true what they say about indisputable facts. Yeah. Everybody tells me that poetry is shit. And I agree that it can be. So this is the bit where I try to convince you that not all poets are intellectuals in libraries or professors in specs. Some of us like football. Some of us like sex. You see, I was brought up on a council estate, so I've got no time for literary debate about whether my meter's a mess or my rhythm is scuffy. Because I'm not Philip Larkin or Caroline Buffy. I'm a real gravel ranter, a poetic punk rocker, and it may cause alarm, it may be a shocker to the scholarly snobs and academic elite to find that there's poetry out on the street. So let's lift up the rocks and see what crawls out. Let's question perception, let's shout and cast doubt on the dull and the dreary, the grim and the grey. And let's hear the poets have got something to say. Because everybody tells me that poetry is bunk. And I agree that it can be. But I'm an old punk, so I just like stuff about things I find funny, about having a beer, about having no money, about crap politicians, about my experts. There's quite a few of them. So lend me your ears, and I'll give you my words. Hello. Hi. So, um, cheers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, as I said, um, thanks very much for, uh, him asking me a lot or letting me come along and perform. I am, I am going to Edinburgh and this is a sort of a, a truncated version of my Edinburgh show. Um, the title of the show came about uh, as, uh, because of something that happened about 18 months, two years ago. It was, uh, it was a real life event. Um, there was a few younger people in the audience. Uh, real life events are what we used to have before the internet. <laughs> yeah, real life events. Something that actually happened. Um, I've been living with my girlfriend for, for quite some time, and uh, how shall I put this? Uh, she dumped me. She dumped me. We've been living together for years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but it's okay, it's okay. Um, it was at the time, it was two years ago, but at the time it was quite sad. I was, you know, I was quite distressed, I was quite emotional. It was, it was weird. It was especially weird because she left me to go out with a man from Bangkok, which was really odd because she'd always told me she wanted a relationship with no time. Now, I've now started there with a joke, right? There will be. There will be two or three jokes sprinkled through the set. Just to warn you, I've started with the joke that um, I can't guarantee they're all going to be as good as that one. I've set the bar pretty high there, I think, so I can't guarantee. But that's obviously that bit wasn't true. The rest of it is true. I did split up with my girlfriend about, uh, about two years ago. And it was a, she did something really strange when we split up. Uh, just, before we, just before I went out separate words, she gave me a piece of paper. And what she'd done on that piece of paper was she made a list of all the things that she hated about me. Yeah, absolutely. I thought that was one. Who's looked at me? But in the spirit of breaking up, I thought, fine, I'll take the piece of paper from her, knowing it before the lies in the wish. Took the paper from her, uh, read the first thing on the list, and just shook my head, gave her a piece of paper straight back and said, for a start off, that's not how you spell pedantic. <laughs> Which was a brilliant repost. It was a brilliant repost. At least it would have been, had it not been for the fact that it was three weeks and several bottles of vodka later when I actually thought of it. <laughs> that's what it does. That's what it does. So, but that was fine. So the relationship ended, but I did at least get a title from the Edinburgh show about that was today. And uh, as I said, the relationship did end, but that was fine, that was okay. Um, I was brought up on a council estate, as I said in the first poem, I'm the son of a doctor, so I knew how to deal with a broken relationship. I knew how I was meant to react. I was a man, the son of a doctor, so I did the only thing I possibly could do. I wrote a poem. So this is the poem that I wrote when I spoke to my girlfriend, and uh, it still, still gets me there a little bit, it's still quite emotional. Uh, this is the poem that I wrote just last week, split up, and it's called I need you. Like the paparazzi need more snappers. Like celebrities need more backslappers. Like the world of music needs more rappers. Like Pretty Out, which is a dodgy place in Hull, needs more middle-aged slappers. I need you. Like the foxes need a hunt. Like the BNP and the National Front. Like a record collection needs James Blunt. Like Simon Cowell should be more of a, can I say this? Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> like the world of finance needs more crooks Like Russell Brand should write more books Like TV needs more celebrity cooks Like Jordan needs more pointless books I need you Like a silent disco needs noise Like Builders Green needs Samoloids Like a lesbian threesome needs boys <laughs> Like a trendy teacher in Corduroys I need you. Like Gaza needs another beer, like a morning dose of diarrhea, like a holiday in North Korea, like syphilis and gonorrhea. I need you. Like a teetotal man needs a pint of bitter, like boring people obsessed with Twitter, like every school needs a Gary Glitter, <laughs> like Ian Huntley for your babysitter. I need you. P.S. 
Where do we keep the tea bags? So, um, so yeah, so that was um, so, um, but then from that I was labelled pedantic and um, it's, it's, it's difficult uh, being labelled pedantic because it doesn't sort of sit nicely with having a proper relationship. It's hard to be pedantic and get on with a woman. Um, one thing I have learned is that women don't like having their grammar corrected during sex. They don't like it, so they're not keen on it. They're not keen. I get, uh, this is something that happened to me. I was, I was with a lady once and we were, we were, we were becoming passionate. We were, becoming, we were getting um, quite... And she was, um, I think we're friends, I think I know this. Um, we were, she was about to, 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 to go downstairs. Well, to, to, she was about to perform downstairs. And um, she, she, just before she did it, she said, she looked up at me and said, it's a boldly girl that no woman has gone before. And I thought, excuse me, can I just stop here for a second? Um, let's just point out that that is actually grammatically incorrect. It's a split infinitive. And although a popular say, because of Star Trek, to bulb go is a split infinitive. In actual fact, it should be to go bulb. Really? Correct. Grammatically correct. I'm sorry to point that out. This book. So she got up, sort of, shook her head, and she said, I'm not having none of that rubbish. And I said, You've got it. You've got it. And I said, I hope. Double negative. What are you doing? Double negative. See, what you've done there is you've negated the point of the statement. Not a non. You're too negative. It's a cancel, aren't you? You're positive. And at that point, she slapped me on the face, walked away, and I never saw her again. And as she was walking away, I thought to myself, that was a waste of £30. Pounds. Right. Oh. Anyway, anyway, so um, I do struggle with. Um, I don't, I'm getting on a bit now, but I still struggle. I don't really. I haven't ever grasped what it is. But uh, attract women to men. I still, I still can't quite. So this is a poem about that. This is called uh, She Chose Him. She had white man in Hammersmith Palais on picture discs. He thought Adolf Hitler was a socialist. She read Richard Brodigan. He read The Sun. He worked as a nightclub bouncer. Not for money, for fun. He got banned from Weatherspoons. She got a degree. And I could never understand why she chose him, not me. She wrote a play for the radio about her favourite childhood trip. The only thing he ever wrote was a betting slip. She had a dimple on her cheek. He had a scar. She was a vegetarian. He worked in an abattoir. He read excerpts from Mein Kampf while I read poetry. And I could never understand why she chose him, not me. She drank red wine in moderation. He drank lots of beer. She gave him her virginity. He gave her gonorrhea. He stared at other women's tits. She stared at the stars. She was a believer in free speech and it talks out his ass. She sailed on the Rainbow Warrior. He joined the BNP. And I could never understand why she chose him, not me. She liked being with her family, visiting them all the while. He only saw his relatives when they were on Jeremy Kyle. She introduced him to exercise and to jogging. He bought her knocked off Volvo and tried to take her dogging. She stood up for women's rights. He preached misogyny. And I could never understand why she chose him, not me. Her favourite book was The Female Eunuch by Jermaine Greer. He watched every episode of Top Gear. She liked picnics in the park. He liked kebabs. She caught butterflies and let them go. He caught crabs. She used the bath to relax him. He used it to pee. And I could never understand why she chose him, not me. She did Pilates and Tai Chi and liked detoxing. He took steroids and put iron and started boxing. She went to a health farm. He went on the piss. He wanted a blowjob. She preferred to kiss. The only thing they had in common was incompatibility. And I could never understand why she chose him, not me. No, I could never understand why she chose him, not me. Until two vital facts emerged that provided clarity. First, he won the jackpot on the national lottery. Yeah. And second, apparently a massive cock. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm sorry, I have been labelled as pedantic. There are dangers uh, being involved with uh, labelled pedantic. The main danger being uh, the potential for being attacked by vigilante gangs of sun readers.